Welcome to Vox Vomitus, also known as Word Vomit. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Vox Vomitus. I am your host today, Jennifer Ann Gordon, the author of Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, and also the soon to be released From Daylight to Madness. Once again, I am co hosted with my two book besties. Alison Martin, author of the Bourbon books, including Dibs and the soon to be released since September, and Trisha Ridinger McKee, the writer of I Say Romantic Suspense, Beyond the Surface, and the soon to be released Beyond the Dream. Today we are with two very mysterious guests. You can see that they're not on camera, <laughs> but I promise you they're real. It is Alison Cross <laughs> and Tamara. Tamara Thorne. You know them as the hosts of Thorn and Cross, Haunted Nights Live, and the best-selling authors of a, I think, a million books each. So I'm going to throw it over to uh, Tamara and Alistair real quick for some hellos, and then we will get started. Hello. Hi. 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 Oh. Yeah. Hi. How are you? I feel totally weird. <laughs> No, it's it's wow. I need a camera. You need a camera. Yeah. That's what I need. Or but maybe even just next time a, next time a drawing of yourselves, an artistic rendering. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. I was gonna you suggest like a stick figure, but that's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> oh see, I was thinking like a draw me like your French girls, Jack. Right. Kind of no. Titanic <laughs> nude drawing. But. Oh, I think we can like send her new gen. We can't do that. Yeah, you, you got to see yeah. the jewels. He he likes to show them off. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, so we're already people. getting there. So Tamara, <laughs> Alistair likes to show the jewels. We're just going right. Okay. We're going right there. Sure. Okay. We do every week. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have a couple quick questions for both of you before we get to uh, the 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 bad of writing. Let's talk about the good of writing. Uh, you two have been writing together for how many years? Um, we started in 2013. Yeah. So it's been like, wow, eight eight years? Am I doing my math right? Seven? I think uh -huh. that's seven, but okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a math. I don't know. We don't have <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Yeah. We started writing in a long time. 2013 we, we we had both been uh previously published and yeah. um yeah so yeah since 2013 we our first release was 2014 or 15 but we started in 2013 yeah yeah we thought we might write a short story and it turned into a novel and that, that yeah. always happens yeah we don't do short stories yeah it doesn't happen <laughs> yeah. yeah it's true <laughs> so um i i've i've stalked both of you i would say in like a benevolent way not a, not, you don't, I, I, I'm sorry I said like a benevolent way. I've, I've stopped you both. And uh, I know that there is some truth to the fact that you met on like AOL chat rooms. Is that right? Or did you um, find each other's email somehow? There's, there's something. No, he, he <laughs> was a robotic dancer and, and Colorado and I tipped him and then we started talking. It turned out he was intelligent too. And <laughs> we've been writing the story ever since. But that that's what we tell people. We got to play story. I like that. We do tell people that. The yeah, truth is <laughs> the truth is I I okay, I'll give you the I'll try to condense it as much as possible. Um I was always a lover of horror and I used to walk up to the uh, library this is when I was living in Salt Lake, and I uh, saw this book on the shelf, a few books by Tamara Thorne. And for some reason, I was just really drawn. It was Moonfall, and maybe it was the title. I don't know. Anyway, I picked it up, and I liked it. I read it. I loved it. Well, this was back in the 90s, and I had dial-up AOL, like, <laughs> you know, like, uh, so uh, I remember, and I didn't have a computer, so I'd go to my mom's house and and get on her dial up to, to look up tamarthorn.com to see if there's anything new out anyway uh it was one of the reasons reading her was one of the reasons i wanted to be a writer that's my point so uh, she was a big hero of mine okay so 
Fast forward a few years, I get published in 2012. Um, it's all great. It's all happy. Everything's fantastic. And then I'm like, you know, I don't know any other writers. So I need to meet other writers. So I start a blog. And on that blog, I start interviewing other writers. And I say, you know, will you come on? And I'll just, it's just written. I'll ask you some questions. You answer it, blah, blah, blah. But one of the first people I wanted to ask was Tamara Thorne. So I found her on Facebook, actually. And um, we just, I, I interviewed a lot of people, but she's the only one that I, you know, we just, we started talking and we've, I don't think we've even gone a single day. No. In sense. We yeah. even talk on the phone and we both hate phones. Yeah, I hate the phone. Yeah, I just yeah. have to say, you talk on the phone. No, the phone? That's crazy. <laughs> I know, right? Well, if we have to, we mostly text all night, you know. But <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, well, it that's, was just that's normal and healthy. Yeah. Just well, that <laughs> <laughs> Trisha's laughing because so uh, Tamara and Alistair, you have to know that. Uh, so Alice and Trisha and I, the Vox Vomitus Vixens, are. Uh, we're book besties and there's not like really any time of the day or night that we couldn't just like message each other. And one of us right. will respond like a bat signal right. has been sent out. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and we're so also in, we're in different time zones. So there are times I wake up <laughs> like 35 hundred messages where the two of them are ping, pinging off each other. And I'm just like, <laughs> just <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We hear that sound down at night because we tend to text anytime either one of us wakes up to pee and has yeah. to pee and we'll start brainstorming if we're both awake. So. Yeah. And to pee. Great idea. What do you think of this? <laughs> it's totally true. It's totally true. I've, I've texted, I have literally texted uh, Tamara at three, four in the morning. Frequently. Just wake up and I'll be like, you know, I just had this idea. What do you think of this? And I'll, you know, think, you know, set my phone down and get it tomorrow. And then, nope, ding. You know what? I think that's great. And then we're up. <laughs> it's like, we're doing you know, this like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you both remind, remind uh, me. Yeah. Uh, so you both, what I love, I love this dynamic of your relationship is that you both write separately and then you write together. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had the fight of who's the Stephen King and who's the Peter Straub? They're both geniuses. <laughs> but they, have different writing, they have different writing style and different writing timelines. So that no. is no. first. Are you both? Well, we write so similarly that it's very hard to tell us apart. Wow. And wow. we also write, we write in the cloud on Skype all day long, every day. And we, you know, we do one book for two hours and another one and read what we have then we do another and another and one of those is always a solo and so we actually are together in our virtual office no matter what we're writing and that way neither one of us goes oh i gotta work on the weekend we keep normal hours it's a godsend yeah definitely right yeah. so i remember and i remember when i was booking this interview you said oh those are our working hours and i thought working hours mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a great idea <laughs> yeah, nine to five. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We really, we really do. Yeah. And it's, and I've never felt, honestly, I mean, in the beginning, because um, I, I basically grew up reading Tamara. So it was, <laughs> maybe that's why we write so much for like, I don't know, because mm -hmm. I mean, that's very possible. But the thing is, is I really felt, you know, in the beginning, as natural as it was, of course, I was a little intimidated, but um, we just gel and it's really, yes, it's really weird and we don't fight. I know, I know everybody wants to hear that we do, but we have oh. never, ever fought. We've never been like, yeah, mm -hmm. people are, I don't think they believe us because it's like, it's really hard because you start doing like a, anything creative with people and boy, the egos can clash, but somehow there's just some sort of weird chemistry here and we yeah. just, we don't like drama and we don't no. fight. Sometimes we stage fake fights to amuse people, but yeah. there's yeah. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> fight, 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 fight. I was gonna say, it just sounds like you guys share a spirit to the point where there's no conflict. So yeah. I'm gonna yeah. say they're a dyad in the force. And yes, I am that nerd who just called them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm like, I think I think that's actually um, as, I think that that's actually a really uh, a really succinct way to say yeah. it actually, is I do is in, when it comes to writing we kind of do seem yeah. to 
the spirit. It sounds weird, but it's true. It's how it feels. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. I have one yeah. more question before I, I kind of open it up to, to Allison and Trisha and then go back to something embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> so do you ever, you say you write so similarly and since you write physically together in the same space, have like the same virtual space, have yeah. you ever read something that one or the other of you has written for your, your book that you're writing together and thought, oh, yikes, this is just not good or not what I was thinking. I feel like you probably haven't, but, and again, no. this is not asking for a fight. <laughs> we read everything daily. You know, we go back over it to start each book. And sometimes we crack up over what we've written and we make fun of it and talk in funny voices. We like to do uh, Blanche from Designing Women and Herschel from The Walking Dead. Yes. I usually, oh, God. Oh, uh, please do that right now. <laughs> it's too long. You mean Blanche from Golden Girls? <laughs> That's it. What yeah. did I say? You designing said, women. Oh, you said designing women. Southern older oh, women. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of those old lady shows. Mm -hmm. Well, Alice. So is a. Uh, you know, so is Alistair Blanche? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm usually I'm usually Herschel, but mm -hmm. he does Herschel better than I do. My my favorite is my favorite is we have a character in our Gothic series that um, oh. and our main main character is named Belinda Moreland, and nobody's ever ever. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I have a voice for Belinda, Belinda, which probably isn't. Yeah, ruin it do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, uh, what should I say? Um, um, say, Grant, do you think there's a ghost in the castle? Grant, do you think there's a ghost in the castle? Well, Belinda, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> oh my god, I'm I love that. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you uh, can do that all the time. It's it's comic relief. Yeah. I yeah, feel Belinda. like you need to record a, a radio play. <laughs> old, old timey where you've got like a sheet of aluminum foil for the thunder in the background. Yeah, that would be yeah. fun. Yeah, so we do <laughs> yeah, funny we voices. Um, as far as though having written something that the other one, you know, I think the most, the, the, the most, I know it's really boring, but the most that either one of us has said about the other one's writing is, you know, um, I don't, this doesn't quite sound right. This doesn't sound like this character or this, I don't really think is, let's let's do this instead. It, there's yeah. never even been a moment of, I think we should go this way. Well, I think we need to go this way. It's just, it's really bizarre. I know it's- It's it, wonderful. Yeah, it's great. It is, it's great. Well, I, you're I, like yeah. literary soulmates. It's yeah, strange. pretty much. I, we, neither I of us have that. drama. We don't like people who fight. We just like to be mellow. Yeah. 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 It works. <laughs> yeah. Do you get to see each other in real life very Some often? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes not, often, but not often because we're we're actually in different states, so not often, but we have. We have a few. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's not weird. We 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 yeah, we yep. Yeah. yeah. So, we met by, uh, I was asked to do an investigation on a haunted cabin. And uh, so I invited him along because we hadn't met in person yet. So the first time we were together, we spent oh, five nights in a really freaky place and got to know each other quite well. It was I so strange uh, outside the room. Uh, on the other I, see Trisha, I see Trisha swooning. So I that am, is going to be is amazing. <laughs> No, it was fun. It was, it, was, it was a hoot. My first, my first, you know, ghost adventure, so to speak, and it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was scary too. And luckily, it was scary. And luckily, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Wasn't awkward, you know, because we'd been talking. But you don't know somebody till you know them. You know what I mean? It's like right. you can talk on the phone. You can talk on Skype. Um, we don't have video cameras, so it's like you know. Yeah. You, you have an idea of someone and then when you meet them and they start doing, you know, just little mannerisms and things that you don't, you never attributed to them. It, it can be kind of weird. It but wasn't weird. Smell right each other. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're making all of us really jealous. I'm just going to say that right now. We're pretty dang jealous of ourselves, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're pleased. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just imagining like Jen and Trisha going and doing one of these haunted adventures and I'll be their safe person that they check in with because I'm not going on that. <laughs> but I'm going to make sure they come back alive. <laughs> oh, I'm there. Trisha I'll be the first one Trisha in. And I would have my <laughs> first one in. First one so in, last one's out. Well, I have a question. I wanted to know, so we sometimes have, I think all, I think all three of us are more, we're more pantsers than we are plotters. At least I'm definitely a pantser. And so when you're writing together, do you guys have to have a plot or a, an idea of where the story is going or does that happen organically, but still together? Because if it's organic and together, how does that work? I know, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's organic. What about the roadmap, Alistair? <laughs> yeah, we, we, okay, so we sit down and we, we talk about, okay, we have this idea. Let's do this. Oh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, now we have our characters. We have our basic idea. How can it end? Well, it could end this way. It could end this way or it could end this way. You want a couple different endings. Okay, go. That's what we do. I love it. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's basically know where we want to get. An editor taught me you have a beginning, middle, and end. He'd asked me for a three-line synopsis uh, of a story, and that was all he needed, beginning, middle. So we know, and I've always done it that way, and as long as there's at least one ending that we know we can write to, we're fine. We can go anywhere we want, and generally that ending does not get in there. It's, yeah. it's a different ending. It will be nice. Yeah, it usually goes a whole different way. But yeah, I've only written one book uh, that I totally uh, plotted. And that was because it was yeah. a murder mystery. And it was because I woke up in the in the dead of the in the dead of night. I, I was it was time to start the next book. And this was a solo book. And I thought, what's the worst thing that, that I could do to a character? What is the absolute worst thing that I could possibly do to a character? And I woke up and I, I'm like, that's it. That's it. And it was a murder mystery. So I sat down and I wrote scene by scene everything that needed to happen because when you're doing a murder mystery you you have to know where you're going you can't just you know so I did that once and I I, I didn't mind it but that's not the, my natural way of doing it at all no that was a bear yeah that yeah yeah and that was just a yeah flaw. you wrote that so fast we must have read that out loud five six times yeah with it yeah yeah so but boy were you speedy well, it's easier in a lot of ways, but at the same time, it's really, you know, you want to start going off in left field and you're like, wait, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It limits you I then because that, you're like, you have to end up here. Yeah. Yeah. And I did it once. What scared me wrote. about writing mysteries is that there has to be a lot of thought put into a mystery to make it yeah. make sense at the end and have at least some of the readers go, oh, I see what you did there. And so yeah, when I read ones where it was clear that the thought was not there and then there was not the sense and I'm sitting yeah. there going, um, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. With a mystery, you need to know the ending. I did one that nobody has ever figured out before it ends eternity. And that was, I can't even tell you where I got, I had the ending and I wrote to it. Yep. And yeah. yeah, I can't say more than that or it ruins it. <laughs> well, now I feel like that's a challenge, Tamara. I'm going to have to get the that. book and be like, I'm going to figure this out before the ending. <laughs> yeah, it is a challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge. Nobody's ever told me they have. <laughs> I awesome. love that. Now I'm going to and lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew on page three. You, you have to understand, everybody, that Allison has a legal background. She's a recovering litigator. Oh, wow. litigator is that the right word? What? No, so she's litigator. Is litigator the right mm -hmm. word? Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to I, say I lawyer. The word attorney that seems, because that seems nobody, tells a, nobody tells attorney jokes. They'll tell lawyer jokes. So I like the word attorney. But I'm talking to the British book. I'm like a barrister because that's a cool word. A, I like that. It. That is much cooler. Much cooler, but out here we don't have the difference between someone who's a solicitor and a barrister, so it's just a lawyer. That's lawyer. No good. nobody likes that, <laughs> no. including me. Andy, for your writing, though. So, um, I've got a couple more questions, but I just want Trisha to make sure. Trisha, do you have any questions before I say I ask a really stupid question? So, I make actually, it, make it good, <laughs> I, I do. I have a couple questions. The first one, though, okay. is um. I, I did some research and I read something about poetry based on Stevie Nick, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> yeah. and I'm oh, that's one of my questions. 
<laughs> Sorry. No, it's not. You know how to compare your notes beforehand, women. <laughs> okay, so this, so this is me. This is me. And it's not, it's not poetry based on Stevie Nicks. It's okay. So when I was a kid, um, I loved music. And the first album that I ever bought was a Stevie Nicks album. I saw it. I just, I loved the cover. I actually thought it was a dude. I thought Stevie Nicks was a guy. I didn't know. I just liked the chick on the cover. I'm like, well, she's, you know, I mean, I was, I was little, so I wasn't like, wow, she's sexy, but there was something there, you know, it was <laughs> the white. Wrench. I hear what you're saying there. Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I but bought. We hear you, I, Alex. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I bought it, and I'm like, oh my god, this is this is a this is a woman, and I love the face. Yeah, <laughs> I love the voice. It's a lady. And, uh, exactly. And more than anything, I loved the lyrics. I loved the imagery, and I started writing poetry. That's where I started writing um, anything. You know, I just, you know, most of the songs, if you, if you, you know, really listen to, especially back then, it's like, you know, oh, I love you, come back to me. No real images. And I didn't, for some reason, her lyrics, because of the images, really spoke to me and it made me go, I want to be able to do that. So I started writing poetry, which eventually evolved into writing. So I never, but I never wrote poetry about Stevie Nicks. <laughs> I just mean, inspired. Yeah. Inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What was your other question, Treasure? Let's see if Jen was going to ask that one too. Okay, okay. Um, Why is weird? Mine's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone's um, writers are always giving advice to other writers. Um, what is the one piece of advice that you wish you could just go and tell everyone? Don't listen to this piece of advice. It's bad advice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Tamara had a, an evil laugh. We yeah. were promised I love it. evil laugh. Something laugh, Alistair Tamara did told one. That someone, someone told Alistair not to try to write in third person because it was too hard. In third person? Yes. Third person. What? Third person. That yeah. only write in first person. You can't do it. In, well, that the person who told him that couldn't write in third. They could only write in first. Yeah, exactly. I'm just I'm surprised by that because one of my friends is currently taking one of those courses peddled by a very large industry. I won't get more specific than that. Mm -hmm. And they were told don't write in first person and don't write in present tense because publishers don't like that. Which yeah, I just I kind of laughed at because I, I write in both first person present uh -huh. and I write in third person uh -huh. limited. And I don't find them actually that different. But I'm just surprised somebody would have said no to third person because that seems to be standard. I would think it's standard. Yeah, it, it was. And it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. It. it that, that's my natural. I've done first person. I've done. I've done it all too. And I can. And I don't really have a problem with 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 any of them. But it was, you know. Yeah. I think it was just this person who who I think couldn't really do it. She, you know, the advice was, oh, don't don't write in third. And that was really stupid advice. And actually, the same person told me, and this was the worst advice I ever got, because this held me back for a long time. The worst advice I ever got truly was, um, oh, you have to keep your characters on a leash. Do not let them decide what happens next. You need to be in control of them. And I'm like, and so I would sit there and try to, you know, and I'm not an outliner. I'm not a plotter. So I would sit there and try to figure out how to make my characters do what I wanted them to do. And I would, I would, you know, uh, kind of freak out when they would start going off into left field. And then um, I eventually realized that's not the way to do it. And now it's like I can sit down and just... If I know the character, I'm going to tell the story, and they're going to tell a better story than I'm going to. I don't know how it happens or what it means, but it's true. Yes. Yeah. Right. Your character is going to surprise you. Yeah. I think that's the sign of, like, the, the writing that's exciting for me is when when I write myself and my character does something, and I think, ah, oh, damn it. I didn't think right. that was going to happen. All right, I'm going with you. Uh, and yeah, I, like I, I'm writing a second book of a book that I thought was just going to be one book because my character, one of my main characters did something really bizarre. And I, I said, well, that's weird. I don't know why that happened. And I kept writing and then it happened again. And I went, shit, shit, <laughs> another book. Right. I didn't know. Exactly. I, oh, no, another I was book. writing historical fiction. <laughs> it's another book. Uh, so uh, I have a question. It's pseudo based on uh, a Facebook exchange I had with Alistair, which he probably <laughs> doesn't remember. 
months and months ago. <laughs> but it, it also for Tamra, it involves the subject of fan fiction. So remember, we're word vomit. Vox vomitus, we're word vomit. Uh, Alistair said something, or I said something, where we talked about how when we were kids, like sixth to seventh grade, we wrote Nightmare on Elm Street fan fiction. Right. Which is a really, a really stupid, gross thing to write about, but I love it. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think fan fiction in general is where a lot of us, even if we don't know it, that's where our writing career is starting, is what's birthing our creativity. So mm -hmm. Alistair, I know you wrote uh, stories based on Nightmare on Elm Street, and I want to hear about those. Uh, Tamara, <laughs> did you? <laughs> My Tamara, Star Trek. did you write something not Star Trek. based on Star Trek. Trek? Star Trek. I mostly did satires, though, and, and I pulled back. I was a huge Star Shadow fan when I was really little. And I remembered it, and I would pull it out of my ass and write fake dark shadows, and then sell them to other kids in high school. But, uh, Star Trek was yeah, what I really love it. And then, them to do it. Yeah, the first time I ever wrote a story that wasn't based on Star Trek or dark shadows was a bunch of girls camping out in the forest, getting eaten by bears. And that was that was probably I was. Probably that's, eleven, that's and I grew up building a hill house, and that had set my course. Nice. So, yeah. so yes. I'm, I'm assuming, and when I'm hearing the Star Trek fan fiction, I'm just thinking, and then John Scalzi goes and actually publishes a whole book called Red Shirts. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yes, this was the book we were waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> nerds. Yes, nerds are good. I'm a big SP one nerd too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. SG1. Uh, so, okay. So, so Tamara, Star Trek combo with Dark Shadows is what I'm hearing. I love that. Uh, Alistair, your Nightmare on Elm Street, you said you wrote fan fiction about that or sequels? I did. I, I did. thought I was writing a movie sequel. <laughs> yeah, I kind of did. And and I and here's the weirdest part. I, I was a really weird kid, you guys. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> my my characters at that time for some reason were always cats. Yeah. They were like talking cats. So, <laughs> so I would write like Nightmare on Elm Street with cats. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> like, look at Trisha. Oh, dear. <laughs> She's like, wow. Trisha, you're Trisha, no, I'm done. <laughs> I love it though, because well, I was a really odd kid too, so I get it. I <laughs> Just the combo. Do you remember the cover, the cover picture of Nightmare on Elm Street? And it's got uh, Heather Lang in camping bed, and it's got the four fingers coming yeah. down. Yes. I, even drew a picture of, I even drew a picture of a cat in bed with the cat's claw with the claws coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair, it still would have been better than the Cats musical that just came out. On, oh my God. I would rather have seen yours to to life, honestly. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Did any of us not write fan fiction? Probably not. Not if you're a writer. You gotta start somewhere. Not right. 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 Yeah. My, my first fan fiction was sixth grade, and it was Nightmare on Elm Street. And <laughs> It was, I, I reimagined it as, reimagined as a, a love story between, between Freddie and, and Nancy. And the other that? six <laughs> Wait, and the that's six stranger than cats. That's stranger than cats. It was so gross. Uh, because there was like a lot of caressing, but with because of the knife hands, it obviously didn't work out. And I, I, I mean, maybe that's out there with Edward Scissor's hands a little bit, and then the <laughs> it was terribly wrong. <laughs> so I turned it in for a school assignment, and the teacher just wrote really big on it, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it wasn't even graded. It was just no. No. <laughs> silly like, teacher. Oh. Oh, I'm no. sorry, Jen. You should have been encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be a serial killer if I was. Oh, that's awesome. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> awesome is not the right word. Uh, you but, but when I saw I saw Nightmare on Elm Street fan fiction, that's when I said they've got to be on our show. <laughs> the These are our people. <laughs> the idea of <laughs> combined with Nightmare on Elm Street. This this is a musical waiting to happen. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, you said this it is, before we did. So. Please. Like, is, is all the all for that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Because I'm hearing Danny Elfman in the background. I'm not sure that's right, but that's what I'm hearing right now. That's <laughs> oh, Stevie oh. Nicks, okay? Uh, yeah, it's a good Stevie Nicks soundtrack. Right? <laughs> I feel like Stevie Nicks would do this project, though. Probably because she's been so epic like American <laughs> Horror Story. I feel like she could bring it to a different level. Yeah. <laughs> a good level. Here? Here? <laughs> Somewhere, somewhere here, <laughs> right now, where you can't see me because I'm just like sitting in a in my bed. Here, somewhere here. Oh, and it should be at least near. <laughs> near our faces. Right now, somebody is saying, "Why did we give these people a show?" And, <laughs> and I'm excited. And Mike. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Uh, so um, I know you both have uh, solo projects, but I feel like 20 minutes before we went live, I was obsessively on Facebook and I saw that you both announced a book that's coming out this winter that I wanted to comment, this is my dream vacation, but I thought, <laughs> again, it would make me look like a, a psycho. <laughs> can, can one or both of you talk about your upcoming book? Because I'm very enamored with this. Well, yesterday we realized we're 88,000 words into it and hopefully more than halfway done. I know. It's uh, called Spike <laughs> Out. And it, it, one of us spit that name out one day and we went, we got to write a book and that went to one of those spates of all night texting. And um, we have worked on this one for a long time because it is a mystery. Uh, it's a little bit of a tip of the hat to Agatha Christie, it's a lot of horror, it's a lot of snark. You, uh, there are old zoos, there are there are strange things on the island. I don't know, it, we've got this whole background lore. It takes place near the town where Mother, our, our collaboration is, is set. And it's, you, you tell them, Alistair. Uh, yeah. uh, Without saying it. <laughs> Alistair wasn't even paying attention. He was it's a, oh, I know, right? Wait, what are we talking about? No. <laughs> you had me at old zoos. So tell me more about the old zoos, Alistair. <laughs> so the, so the, the history of the house uh, in, includes uh, an old zoo. And, and so there's there's basically, without giving anything away, it's, it's a haunted house story, or is it? There's yeah. lots of blackmail there's lots of um you know think think um knives out with a lot of sex and really <laughs> sealed the deal with lots of sex yeah yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so yeah it's it's uh we always do we always do uh this one's gonna be uh yeah so yeah. you about like the nightmares of things, the bad, the way things go bad. I think that is what we are really bad. We write so much, like I'm not even kidding. Our first book, we had to cut 50,000 words out of it. How long was it when it was done? Well, and it was too long when it was 30, done. 35, I don't know. They're always around 130. Okay, yeah. so, that, so, so you were at like 180, 185 yeah. and then went, yeah. no. But okay. it was easy to cut. It's better to have too much and cut than to have too little and have to pass. It is. And right now, exactly. yeah. right now with Spite House, we are we are eighty eight thousand words in, and as far as the storyline, we're like, oh, we're about half there. We're, <laughs> we're ready to start writing hard and fast. Things are people yeah. are dying now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our yeah. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're so, so when I read, read this, yeah, we've read it three Sorry. times through, yeah. and I'm already fixed it you know things that because this is a complicated book yes it is so we've it's already the hardest we've ever read it, and it's still eighty eight thousand words and not anywhere near done yeah, but we know where it's going <laughs> well do you guys is there happens. something that's keeping you that it has to be at 130 or is there someone saying no, okay it's, habit. Like it's too long it's a, well, habit. Okay. It's a habit yeah back in the old days when um my editor 
would say, use a smaller, before you had, before they had computers and wanted you to send it in on disk, they would say, he would tell me, oh, you can get by with 125 because I would always come in around there. And uh, he'd say, just make the font smaller mm -hmm. and you know, make the margin smaller. And 10.5, so, not 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 10 point, not 12. And I always got away with it. He made sure of that. And I'd still have to cut like 10,000 words, but that was okay. I didn't need those words. So, yeah. Well, so, that's yeah. It is, it is, there is something really satisfying about making it clean because you got to make it clean. It's got to be really, you know, you don't want to have wasted words. But, that you know, is fun. Yeah, it is fun. But boy, when you're like, like we are right now, I'm like, what, how huge is this book going to be? This is by far, I think, the hardest one we've ever written. Oh, it's, by far. Yeah. 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 yeah so we always have. It, it, it sounded like Agatha Christie meets Shirley Jackson. So to me, that seems yeah, like yeah. that Plus, is a, it, those are, those are really high oh, bars oh, and a yeah. lot of stuff that needs to be done well. Well, yeah. you know, you've got, uh, what's the socially correct word for 10 little Indians? And then there were none. Um, you've got that, that the place on an island thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we're not going with that plot, but there's that. And then what else have we got? Yeah, this house has haunted house stories, but the family, this is one screwed up family. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. Yeah. There, there, there's all kinds of things going on there that you wouldn't believe. Insect yeah. is best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> yeah, where are you going on this? Yeah. On a scale of Luke Skywalker to Jamie Lannister, how is this story going? Twin says his best sex. If you yeah. can't keep it in your pants, keep it in the family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, this is not new. Right now, people are going, I'm not listening to this show anymore. <laughs> but everyone, Sorry. Who is, everyone who's still listening, please tune in next week where we have uh, award winning author Christy Stratos. She's probably like, I can't believe incest was the segue to introduce me. <laughs> but we have Sorry. Christy Stratos next week. And then best selling author Paul Tremblay the week after that. Uh, so, I hate to cut this short, but it's better to leave people guessing. Thank you, Alistair and Tamara, for coming on our our wacky show. Thank you once again to Allison and Trisha for being the best co-hostesses and the Vox Fixins that we are should have always been. Thank you to everybody <laughs> at the Global Authors on the Air Network and Pam Stack, our executive producer, and Roman Sirotin, my fiance and our producer, whose birthday is tomorrow. So happy early birthday, Roman. Happy, happy birthday. birthday, Roman. Happy birthday, Roman. Right now he's probably going, oh, no. Uh-oh, I'm going to edit this out. <laughs> awesome, possum, possum. Awesome, possum. It's happening now. Thank you, everybody. Uh, once again, for listening to Vox Vomitus, and we will listen to you, see you, listen to you, and hear from you next week. Be live with you next week. <laughs>